A warm hello to all of you from India. I'm Dr. Jayaditya Purkayasta, and I have been working on turtles of Northeast India for the last 12 years. So I thank you for allowing me to speak in this joint annual symposium of Turtle Survival Alliance and IUCN SSC Tortoise and Freshwater Turtle Specialist Group. My presentation is about uh, the work we have done, and uh, it is about the role of Temple Pond in turtle conservation in Assam. So the point is, why Temple Pond? Why did we select Temple Pond? Temple Pond has a age-old history in Assam because they, most of the Temple Pond were established during the Ahom Kingdom. The rulers, once upon a time, they were the rulers of Assam. And uh, Temple Pond has a lot of uh, important benefit to the surrounding. So some of the important thing is like they control flood and they also help in recharge of groundwater. But apart from those, uh, in context of turtle, the most important thing that uh, Temple Pond did was because of the ritual that we believe in. And that is the religious practice that we have and the association of turtle with the religious practice. So. Uh, to give you a context that uh, in uh, Hinduism, we believe uh, turtle to be uh, avatar of Lord Vishnu and we call it Kurma avatar. And that's why uh, turtles in the temple pond, though not in biological ground, but on religious ground, they are kept there. And people release a lot of turtle uh, um, due, during different occasions. One of those occasions is being like when a child is born in someone's home, uh, there is a practice in Assam that a turtle is being released into the temple pond and it is believed that the child will get the age of turtle and it is believed turtle lives a very long life like 30, 300 years or something like that. Now, these temple ponds do have opportunities and that is what we are working with. To give you a brief idea, we have till now uh, listed 30 temple ponds from across um, Assam and adjacent state. And some of the bigger ones are Hoigri Madhav Temple, then Nakshankar Temple, uh, Kamakha Temple also used to have turtle. And there are few more temple pond, and some of them are really major temple pond. So what we realize that in all those temple pond cumulatively, we are having a total of uh, 16 species of turtle living in them, including most of the Critically endangered turtle, including black soft shell turtle, Assam uh, roof turtle, etc. Now, these uh, turtles, they are uh, really very, very rare nowadays in Assam because uh, uh, primarily what I realized when I was a kid, a uh, lot of turtle were consumed. Even uh, the fishermen, we used to sell uh, turtle uh, in the marketplace in open when I was very young. But things have changed now. But unfortunately, uh, the sightings of turtle has also gone down nowadays. So um, now the problem is that temple ponds at least have some population of turtle, including black soft shell turtle, that, which is our flagship species. But uh, since they are not conserved in uh, biological reason or because they are conserved in religious ground, not much, uh, you know, breeding or uh, living facilities are provided in those temple ponds. So wh whatever it infrastructure is there, that, that are not very suitable for turtle. To give you an idea, what are the challenges that we face in this temple pond is like most of the periphery of the temple pond is made out of concrete. So turtle cannot go up and we have seen that many turtle having scars in this part and they are uh, missing males because they try to go up for breeding and for other things, but they are not able to go up. And because here, religious belief that turtle is concerned, many people believe that turtles are like fishes. So since fish do not need to go up, turtle may not need to go up. So that's why the structure has been developed like that. And <clears throat> again, same reason turtles, they do not have any basking spot, whichever there is in the natural uh, surroundings or natural places there. But in Temple Pond, we do not have basking spot. So that is another problem because then they cannot regulate their metabolism, etc. And uh, the most important thing, another thing that we uh, looked into this temple pond is wherever there is like 
a uh, little bit breakage in the concrete and there are a little bit soft ground those soft grounds are made up of not silt they are mostly hard clay and pebbles and etc so what we saw when we started the work was turtle were going out to lay egg and they will lay egg just on the surface or will dig little bit like this much will they will dig and lay the egg because i think they by habit they can dig soft soils like river and silt and all but this hard soil they cannot dig these are clay very hard clay they cannot dig and so they cannot um, you know lay the egg to the optimum level that they are used to now because of this reason excessive heat falls on these eggs and then you know they are exposed to pest infestation and many a times like other animals will dig up and eat up the egg so these are some of the problems that we saw in the temple pond and in general lack of uh, public awareness though public want to help but they don't know how to help that is one of the bigger reason that uh, the problem that we are facing in temple pond but after covid we are facing another problem that i have seen because pre covid like in 19 uh, 2019 we did not see this uh, infestation of red ear slider now every temple pond is having uh, maybe uh, the temple pond which are near cities the number one species is red ear slider by by number but which was not there uh, post covid so Uh, what i believe is because turtle have been rare and because people want to offer the only offering they can get is from pet trade or pet shop they can bring it and this is legal in india to if you have license if in a pet trade you can keep it so <clears throat> they are selling and, and people are releasing this and now from those temple pond some of them are like during flood they will flow out into the main water bodies and now they are like in those natural water bodies and i i don't have to highlight that how much havoc they can create if they are uh, breeding prolifically that is what we have already seen in last four years in temple pond where they are now they are the number one species that at least two or three temple pond uh, for example we have a temple pond near guwahati jurpukuri most of the turtles are red ear slider now so uh, this thing can replicate itself in the natural habitat so many a times i requested for grants from different agencies but not a single time i did get one because this species is not important this species is not highly endangered but they can have impact on other species that we are having so eradicating them in a human manner like we are not going to kill that but there should be a process where we can track all the soul turtle and uh, that people who want to donate we can keep it in some our repository our facility that till they die so there can be many such uh, uh, initiation we can uh, carry forward but this is really a big problem nowadays so what are some of the steps that we have taken it is a picture of ugratara temple just now i was speaking about so you see we broke some of the boundaries and uh, filled it up with river and silt and then next you see we are we also made basking spot with very cost effective and it looks also good we put it in the middle 30 feet by 30 feet you know the bamboo network and it works well so this small these are small intervention but they they do have good impact and then also for public awareness we created such structures near ugratara and we also keep on putting holding in some of the temple pond so also get people engage mainly youths regarding turtle and i see like the student group between class 5 uh, or 4 to 8 they are the best group to work with because they want to know so much thing like you go beyond that like 9 10 i used to work with them but they i see they have lot of um, academic load and also they have their you know peer pressure etc etc so this is a very good group as a result what we found was like Uh, we got good eggs because we now started transferring egg from the uh, wherever the eggs are laid and we are putting them in the boxes with vermiculite etc wherever whatever is possible sometime in the river and silt also we are doing but the success rate is more than 90% and we are mostly dealing with the soft shell turtle so we have released like um, uh, more than 300 individual of uh, black soft shell peacock soft shell etc in the wild in the protected area and we got lot of uh, publicity for that but suddenly i started thinking in other way round like are we really 
doing uh, good for the nature because we did not see the genetic makeup and we see in temple pond some of the uh, species look in between so uh, is there can there be a chance where you are you know the offsprings the kids the hatchlings are like hybrid and we are releasing hybrid so that also i uh, formulated for project for help but i don't know uh, when i will get but i never got one till date maybe there is something that i should improve and you people can help me and finally uh, the way forward that i will see is the enhanced habitat con uh, condition in temple pond community involvement and genetics that the one we really really want to do because uh, will do more harm than benefit because everybody now wants to release turtle from temple pond bred turtle to the wild but we need to see into their genetic makeup and we want to make network that's why i'm here to talk to you like we really want need your help because we uh, we have our own shortcomings in knowledge as well as maybe in certain effort part and of course in the funding part so till date i just only got from one grant from mbz and mohammed bin zaid species conservation fund and i thank them because they initiated my whole turtle project but after that i somehow i could not manage and also there should be a change in policies where in state like assam which is obsessed with rhino with all due respect to rhinos but we also have to look uh, beyond this mega mammal we have to look into those smaller animals which are equally important so that's all that i have to tell and um, i will not <laughs> thank you until you help me make my project sustainable i really need your help so your expertise or any type of uh, support will be great to make this project a long term one because i have seen many small small short term project and many redundant project working different people working in the same project again and again it's a waste of effort and money so why not we club together and work for the same goal which is conservation of turtle with proper knowledge and you know scientific basis that's all that i have to say thank you